universal basic income has been a proposition that has gained a lot of ground recently in the world of economic and social policy. In basic terms, universal basic income, or UBI, is a hypothetical government program that gives a periodic payment to its citizens regardless of education level or working status. Once thought of as a rather utopian proposal, UBI consideration has gained a lot of traction recently due to its well-known proponents who are attempting to find feasible and legitimate ways to implement this policy in their respective nations. Meanwhile, in Northern Europe, the Nordic countries have had long-standing recognition as international leaders in providing social welfare to their citizens. It seems that as UBI policy talks progress, the idea could strike revolutionary development that Scandinavian nations would be enthusiastic to implement in their own countries. However, even as this idea gets its footing, most of the Nordic countries' social and economic welfare debates have yet to place UBI policy on legitimate rounds of discussion. Because Scandinavia has a reputation for jumping at the opportunity to provide social welfare, but has yet to give UBI its chance, we raise the following question. Could Scandinavian nations one day embrace implementing some sort of universal basic income? If so, how could it be implemented? And if not, what are the barriers preventing it? In aiming to answer the question involving Scandinavia and contemporary UBI debates, it is important to initially turn the focus to the United States, where the topic has been quite relevant as of recent. During the 2020 Democratic primary in the US, Andrew Yang took the leap from entrepreneur to presidential candidate. He ultimately struggled to find the votes and dropped out of the race a few months before the DNC. However, he is widely accredited for bringing up ideas and conversations that were crucial to the outcome of the election. One of these ideas was the Freedom Dividend, a monthly $1,000 check delivered directly to every adult in the United States. The Freedom Dividend was the first time a genuine UBI proposal had ever been a legitimate talking point in such a high stage of politics around the whole world. Andrew Yang has three points of rationale for the necessity of the Freedom Dividend. First, he claims that the present issue of job loss due to recent advances in automation makes it necessary for citizens to receive a stable source of income in an unstable job market. Second, he believes that people who do not have to worry about living paycheck to paycheck will have more opportunity to pursue their interests and contribute to the economy from the ground up. Third, he claims that making sure the tech giants and top earners pay their fair share of taxes, that is the last piece of the puzzle to build his vision of a trickle-up economy and fund the freedom dividend. To answer the question of whether the Scandinavian nations can embrace a UBI plan, Yang's framework for the Freedom Dividend will be shifted over to the Scandinavian nations for proper analysis on the effects and ramifications of a theoretical implementation of the policy. But before this, it is important to discuss the specifics of how exactly Yang's Freedom Dividend is meant to be implemented. The substantial amount of money needed to fund a nationwide plan to give a monthly check to all citizens must come from somewhere. Any economist, including Yang himself, understands this puzzle regarding universal basic income. Andrew Yang's Freedom Dividend has a few different ways of raising the funds necessary to pay for this project. First, he proposes adding a standard federal 10% value added tax, or VAT rate, to the US. A VAT is different from a standard sales tax in the sense that the tax is collected in stages along the production process rather than directly from the consumer. As of the time this video was made in March 2021, the United States has no existing federal VAT. Yang expects that the Freedom Dividend's proposed VAT will be a substantial source of revenue for the UBI plan. Another source of funds needed to run Yang's UBI plan would come from taxing the top earners and polluters in this country. Another important aspect of Yang's plan is that the citizens will have the choice between taking the check and sticking to their current benefits from any federally offered welfare program. Taking both would not be an option, it's an opt-in. These ways are how Yang's Freedom Dividend would obtain the funds needed to pay a $1,000 monthly check for all American adults. Proponents of recent UBI talks have been plentiful but those against the idea have voiced their concerns as well. An example of this is from a 2019 Joint Business Insider article written by University of Maryland economics professor Melissa Kearney and University of Chicago economics professor Magni Bogstad. A concern they raise is that the potential removal of existing tax credits such as EITC and CTC in favor of a monthly $1,000 check. And they argue that while social welfare in the United States is few and far between, these tax credits just mentioned have still been effective at easing the pressure off of poor families with multiple children. They go on to claim that if UBI was accepted in lieu of these credits, the results would offset or even worsen the conditions for the families affected. 
Another example of UBI pushback comes from Ben Shapiro, a conservative political commentator. He argues that the freedom dividend is unnecessary because Andrew Yang blows the issue of job loss from automation out of proportion. While he does concede that extreme job loss from automation is a legitimate reason to enact a UBI policy, Shapiro argues that any advancing automation only causes a gradual decline in job loss and still requires people to monitor the piece of machinery that carries out their work. Inciting a long-term economic history of technological advances in production, he unveils that innovations in machinery lead to new and expansive job opportunities in the market rather than a simple decline. These are some of the existing general arguments against universal basic income. As Andrew Yang's proposed UBI plan coined the Freedom Dividend is still up for debate in terms of its potential to solve modern problems, it cannot be denied that its prominence is at the forefront of any UBI debate in the world today. For this reason, the Freedom Dividend will be applied to Scandinavian nations and evaluated within a theoretical framework to answer the question posed earlier. Could Scandinavian nations one day embrace implementing universal basic income? A 2018 experiment backed up Andrew Yang's prediction that unemployed persons with access to a monthly check will feel more fulfilled due to the factor of money no longer being an issue to them. From 2017 to 2018, Finland engaged in a basic income experiment in which 2,000 unemployed people were chosen at random to receive a 560 euro per month check from the government. The results of this experiment give policymakers around the globe a glimpse into what UBI could actually look like in the modern world. The experiment aimed to measure both employment rates and surveyed well-being that results from basic income. While employment rates remain unchanged between the receivers of the check and the control group, those who received the check were surveyed as feeling more happiness, and they had a better general sense of well-being than the control group. Applying the results of this experiment to a legitimate Scandinavian discussion of whether or not to enact a UBI plan, it seems that if Andrew Yang's predictions hold true in real life, that a monthly check has a positive impact on personal well-being. Therefore, it seems as if there is a clear argument to be made that Finland's experiment resulted in evidence for enacting the Freedom Dividend, because the increase in surveyed well-being of those who received the check was very high compared to the control group. Now, in technical terms, the Finland experiment was not a real UBI experiment. It is important to note that because the Finland experiment specifically gave unemployed people basic income, that this is considered by Finland as a rendition of their existing social security policy rather than UBI. This experiment is not quite enough to answer our question outright about the real-life effects of a UBI plan in Scandinavia. However, it does give the world the only existing glimpse into the possible ramifications of what contemporary UBI plan could look like under a Scandinavian nation. On the other side of the argument, applying a policy like the Freedom Dividend in the Nordic countries will result in additional taxes on top of their existing very high tax rates. Indirect taxes, such as a VAT for the nation's corporations and businesses, are relatively high in Scandinavia compared to other EU nations. The EU has a standard 15% VAT rate, and the Scandinavian nations all have around a 25% VAT rate. Because the Freedom Dividend already involves adding a VAT to the United States, this added VAT rate to Scandinavian countries may have an adverse effect in driving businesses out of the countries, an event that is already downplayed by Scandinavian nations as it stands today. Impractical new taxes may be one reason why there is no universal basic income plan that has reached legitimate discussions in Scandinavian politics. Based on existing social welfare structures and current high tax rates, an argument can be made that applying the freedom dividend in Scandinavian social policy would be too impractical to enact any positive change. Another explanation for the lack of legitimate UBI discussion in Scandinavian politics may be that job loss from automation is not too problematic of an issue in Scandinavia. Shapiro's argument that new technologies bring in opportunities for employment in the long run is backed up by the way Sweden has embraced recent advances in machinery. Since Sweden's existing social welfare has already softens the blow of losing a job to machinery compared to the US, the consequences of losing a job due to automation are not as severe. Instead, people are compensated quite well when put in this position. When breaking down the arguments for and against UBI policy in Scandinavia, the reasoning behind the reluctancy from Nordic policy officials to discuss such a plan comes to light. Because Scandinavian social welfare policy already includes effective measures and solutions to many problems, a UBI plan such as the Freedom Dividend would not be able to coexist alongside them. Barriers to enact UBI in Scandinavia include the increasingly high VAT rate 
and the lack of issues stemming from job loss from automation. While initial experiments show it to be effective in its goal to relieve personal economic stress and promote general well-being, the fact remains that implementing a UBI policy must result in the complete restructuring of the Nordic country's current social welfare system in order to be warranted in its goals. But unfortunately for Andrew Yang and other UBI proponents, there is no Walt Disney ending to this story today. The complete restructure of the social welfare system will not occur anytime soon, and that is why universal basic income in Scandinavian nations is a proposition that must be put on hold for the time being. Thank you.